Hey, what's going on, guys, and welcome to another episode of Building on WordPress. My name is Josh Donnelly, and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at how to create a nifty little pricing table with a uh, interval toggle here, so from monthly to annual in this case, and then having this content both easily editable um, in the future on the back end, but also dynamic like you see here. So let's go ahead and just rebuild this thing. Now, this was the inspiration. I did not build this one here, but we're gonna kinda try to copy this, right? So let's jump into our handy dandy builder here. As you guys know, I like to use Cornerstone, but what we're gonna actually take a look at today uh, will work in pretty much any builder that allows you to pop in a little bit of custom CSS and a little bit of JS. And while that might sound super intimidating, I promise you guys we're gonna keep things super simple and super straightforward. And if you don't understand CSS or you don't understand JavaScript, you can literally just copy paste what I am including in the link in the description below. But let's go ahead and get things started here. So we're gonna go ahead in Cornerstone and add a new page. And this is gonna be our pricing page. So we'll go ahead and give that the name pricing. And because I want this visible on the front end, I'm just gonna set the status to published instead of draft. So with all of that set, we're just gonna go ahead and build this whole thing from scratch. And we're gonna keep things pretty simple so that we can keep the video moving along. But let's create our design here. So jumping back and forth, I kind of like how they have the name of the plan. Then we got the price, a call to action, and a couple of features. So let's kind of try to mimic something similar to that. So we'll go ahead in our first container here. And just because I like their rounded edges, let's go ahead and add some border radius. Maybe we'll do one M all around. And uh, we don't need a border, but let's maybe add a little bit of padding in here because as you guys know, I like a little bit of breathability in my design. And let's go ahead and add some headlines. Now, if you don't wanna watch how to do this because you've got your own ideas of how you wanna build your pricing table or whatever this thing may be that you want to include a toggle on, then feel free to skip forward in this video and you can jump to where we actually get to building the toggle and how that switches between these. But let's go ahead and follow along with some of this styling here. So we got our headline in here and we're gonna go ahead and just make this a little bolder and maybe we call this our uh, good plan, right? Something like that. We'll go ahead and make this maybe, uh, I don't know, two Ms, something like this. Yeah, I like that. And just for the sake of ease, I'm just gonna use a sub headline here, but you could also just use some text. Let's go grab some lorem ipsum, maybe just like a sentence or two, something like this, and we'll pop that into here. So there's our explanation of what a good plan is. And you know what? I just kind of want this to be a little less black there. There we go. Um, and then let's do uh, some pricing. So we'll do another uh, headline element. This one, we are actually gonna set to a span and let's make this maybe three something like this, make it bold. We'll add in our price, $5. And we might want that to say on the sub headline, maybe it's per month, something like that. And that's looking pretty good. We'll space things out in just a moment here. Now let's go ahead and add our call to action. And we'll call this subscribe, maybe, maybe a little longer call to action, subscribe today, something like that, right? Uh, we'll go ahead and set this to a width of 100%. So it's spanning our full pricing container here. Kind of like how they had a border on it. So let's actually get rid of our shadow here. We'll add a little border, one pixel, and just make that black. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add one more headline underneath that. And we're going to call this one. We'll make it a span as well. We'll call this features, something like this here. And then within features, I'm actually gonna just do this in a row just cause it's easy to space out and do it quickly. So we'll just add a single column. Let's go ahead and add another headline inside of that. And we're gonna go ahead and we'll actually make our row a list and we'll make our column. We were just trying to properly structure this, right? So it's like a list item in there. And then I'm gonna actually enable our graphic on this and we'll make this a span as well. And we'll type in here, amazing feature, right? So this is where you'd be like listing out all your different features. I'm going to come down here to our icon and I'm going to type in check. And maybe we want this check to be, I don't know, some fun color like this, eh, a little more neon than that, you know, maybe something like that there, right? I like that. It's looking pretty good. Let's make this bold on that features headline there. Now we're now we're pretty much in business. Now there are a couple of different ways that we could start to space this out. I'm just gonna use a little bit of margin for the sake of time here, but on our price, we'll come in here and we'll add some top margin, maybe two M's and two M's of bottom margin, spacing things out. 
on our subscribe button. I think we'll add two M's of bottom margin on that to space things out. And then on our features, we want that to be a little closer to the actual feature. So we'll just do one M. And now we can jump in here, go to our row and just duplicate this column a few times. Maybe we'll do seven of those just so you have like seven amazing features. Now, I think we're pretty close to something like this. Obviously, I'm not matching this style exactly, but you can kind of see how we would go about doing this. Now, to add some separation, um, I kind of like this gray color, so let's do F7, F8, FA. Kind of a light gray background, and so now on our column here, we'll just go ahead and make that white. And that's looking pretty good. Now, do they have a border on that at all? Now, there's this white with a gray, but this is good. I think we can make something like this work. Maybe we'll add some separation there in a minute, but let's go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it over here. And I'm just using the keyboard shortcut on a Mac of Command C or Control C if you're on a PC. And we'll go ahead and do that one more time right here. So now we have good, we have better, and we have best. So there's our three plans. Now we may want a little like, you know, uh, identifier up here of like our most popular plan. I kind of like that, think it's kind of cool. So we could come in here. So what we're gonna do, and there's a couple of ways we could go about doing this. I'm just gonna do it with a little bit of negative margin here. So we're gonna drop in another headline right up here at the top and we will go ahead and start styling this out. So we'll do another span here. We'll write most popular and let's start adding a little bit of space, maybe one M of space. That's probably looking pretty good. Let's round it out just like our example did. So give it a full border radius. Um, let's go ahead and add some, we'll just do a background of white for now, which you'll see will make sense in a moment. And let's add a little border to this, at least for the time being, just so we can kind of see what our shape is looking like. That's looking pretty good. Uh, obviously we want this to be centered, so let's go ahead and center our text in there. So we'll go ahead and do something like this. And now I think we're, we're in business. That's looking pretty solid. Now we just want this to overlap a little bit. So we'll click on that headline again, come over to our margin here and turn that on. And now we can just start playing with this a little bit, but we might want to do like negative 20 pixels, something like this here. Nope. Negative, let's do negative 30 pixels. See what that looks like. Nope, let's do negative 50 pixels and see if that's, that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little less. Let's do negative 45. I kind of like what that overlap looks like there. And then I obviously want there to be a little bit of space, uh, you know, between this and our first better headline, but then I also want those to align. So what I'm gonna do on better here is jump into our top margin and just add two M's to the top of that. But then because I want these all to align, I might add two M's to the top of all of these as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So now good, better, best are in a row. We got our most popular up here. Let's go ahead and pick a color to outline this in. So, you know, maybe it's something like, what was theirs, green, something like that. Yeah, I like that. Um, so maybe we do something like this here. And then we'd obviously wanna change out these green icons. Maybe these are black in this case for just this one. And so we'd copy that style, select our row and command shift V paste just the style. So now all of those change for me and that's, that's looking pretty good. What do they do with their button there? They made it a fully black button. So let's go ahead and do the same. Again, obviously I'm not matching their colors exactly here, but you get the idea. Uh, so we do something like that. And then our subscribe today text, we want that to maybe be just white and then white with a little opacity. And now we're looking pretty good. I kind of want this to be a little more vibrant here. Maybe we try using the same green color uh, here. Let's try this. Boom, boom. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm really liking how this came together. Um, I don't know, do they have, uh, they do have a slight border on that. I don't really like this dark charcoal color on the border. So let's uh, let's try this with just kind of like a really light, yeah, that's looking pretty good. And then maybe we want this to be bold. So, you know, really looks like it's the most popular. So cool. I think this is looking great. Then what I might do on something like this is take the column and add a little box shadow on our most popular one. So we do like 0 0.5 M's, two M's and a little bit of, a little bit of box shadow here. Let's, you know, take it up to 30, something like this. Now it's kind of lifted off the page a little bit there. And then if we wanted to add a little bit of separation on these, maybe we do What's our border color here? We'll just copy this over, right? So this 230, we'll use that as our border color and pop it here. And so now there's just a little border on the white one. And we'll go ahead and do the same over here and add just a little border on that white one. All right, this is looking great. So maybe just for the sake of this example, we'll call this our monthly good, our monthly better, and our monthly best, right? 
Now we wanna show our annual rates. We're gonna duplicate this section. And the reason I like doing it this way is because my clients can actually easily jump into this and just change this because they can actually see, here's my annual one down here and here's my monthly one up here. So let's go ahead and change this to annual good, annual better, and annual best. All right, that's looking pretty great. So now we need to add our toggle. And because we are going to actually be showing and hiding these sections based on the selection of the toggle, we don't wanna house the toggle inside one of these sections because it would disappear. But what we're gonna do is actually just add an additional section uh, to the top of our document here. So let's go ahead and click on section. That adds a new section up here. Now you could do uh, you know rows and columns like the default, but we're actually gonna hold down the command key and just add a div element so that we don't have a row and a column, it's just the div. Now, within this div, just for the sake of making sure our designs line up, I'm actually gonna turn on our global container, which gets it right in line here with like our rows and all of that fun stuff. And now we can start building within this div. Now. Building out a toggle um, can be done with CSS. It's basically styling a checkbox, right? But it can be pretty in-depth and there are some great resources already out there. For example, on CodePen, Matt Smith has actually put together a great resource for this toggle right here. And we can use this uh, to build out what we're trying to do. So instead of reinventing the wheel, let's go ahead and just use what Matt's put together for us here. Because we've already created our own div container, we actually are only gonna copy the label here. So if you can see, we got our opening label and our closing label and everything in between. So let's go ahead and copy that, jump back over to our page here. And within our div, we are going to add a raw content element. And within this raw content element, we are going to add our switch class. And you'll notice right now it is just a checkbox because again, that's basically what a toggle is at its core. But now we wanna style this. So let's jump back over to Matt's styles here and we're gonna grab from the switch. And we're gonna copy this all the way down to the end of the slider here. You don't wanna copy all of these general stylings because that's just for like the canvas area and body area down here. So we'll grab the switch styles, copy those, jump back over to our document here. And in Cornerstone, it makes it really easy to add page CSS. We're just gonna go ahead and command paste uh, those styles. And now you'll notice we now have a switch here and that switch is totally usable. But a couple of things, that switch right now is not doing a single thing to our page. And there's some additional styles that we wanna add around the switch so that people know what they are selecting. So what we're gonna do here is click on our div and let's go ahead and turn Flexbox on, go to row, and we are going to horizontally center these items. So now we have our toggle in the middle there. Uh, now around the toggle, we wanna add a couple of things. So we're gonna add a headline and we'll do that here. And that headline is going to be a span and this span will say monthly. So this is our monthly plan. And then on the other side of that, that will say annual. So let's do something like this here. Now we want these to be vertically centered as well so that they aren't offset like this. So let's go ahead and just select our div again, come down here to where we have our vertical set to start and we are just gonna select center on that. And now everything is looking pretty good. Now let's just go ahead and add a little bit of padding, maybe just all around. You could just add some margin, but I'm just gonna add some padding here. And that padding is maybe gonna be one M just all around. And then we'll do the same thing on our annual side here as well and make that one M all around. And now that is looking pretty good. Now, if we wanted to add the little call out here as well, where they have like 33% discount, a um, couple of ways we could do that, but let's just make this simple. We'll duplicate our annual here. We'll go ahead and shrink this down to maybe like, uh, I don't know, 0 0.35, something like that. And we will come in here. I'm just gonna choose sort of an arbitrary color. Um, I think well, probably what we had there was pretty good, something like that and maybe give it some rounded edges like that. Uh, maybe we give it just a little more left and right padding. Let's go something like that. I think that looks good. Make it bold. And uh, maybe we don't want it to overpower everything else. Maybe it's like 0 0.85, yeah, something like that. 0 0.85 M's. And then let's go ahead and just give it a 33% uh, discount with an exclamation point. There we go, that looks pretty good. Now we also want this to look seamless. So we just wanna get rid of like that color differentiation here. So let's just make this top section that same 
background color, uh, F7, F8, FA, and now it's looking pretty seamless, almost like it's connected to this section on the front end. You would actually not even really be able to tell that these are two separate sections, and you could close up this gap if you wanted to as well. I'm just going to leave it there for now, but you'll still notice we have our annual showing and we have our monthly showing, and hitting this toggle doesn't do much of anything. So now let's go ahead and wire up the functionality itself. So let's jump back into Cornerstone here, and we want to name these two sections, uh, and we're going to use those names in our JavaScript uh, that we create. So section two, this is our monthly, so we'll come over to customize and we'll give it an ID of monthly and section three here, which is our annual section. We're going to click customize and give it an ID of annual. Now you could give these IDs anything. You might be creating something completely different where you're using a toggle. Just know that you got to give uh, the first state of the toggle an ID, which is this one and the second state of the toggle an ID, which is this one. And then in the JavaScript that we're going to pop in here, you just want to make sure those things match. So let's go ahead and expand this out a little bit like this. We'll jump into our page JavaScript here, and we are going to just pop this in. So we are basically hiding our annual. So if you were to change annual to something else, right, it might say like, uh, you maybe have like a basic versus a pro plan. If this said pro in the ID here of your section, then you would just wanna make sure that this says pro here as well in this ID and anywhere else we make those mentions. So you guys can go ahead and update those things. But with this little bit of JavaScript in here, we are gonna go ahead and save and jump back over to the front end of the site and refresh. And now you'll notice we only see monthly because annual is being hidden. And when we click on annual, this all switches over and monthly is hidden. So you know what, just so we can see this all a little better in view, let's go ahead and just shrink things up a little here. We'll add a little less padding here and maybe just shrink this one down a tad. So those are a little closer together. And then we'd want that to match here so it doesn't jump. Just make sure your section designs match so you don't actually see the change happening. We'll go ahead and refresh. And now we got our monthly right up here by our toggle and switching goes to annual. And you can see all of our features could change if we wanted them to, because this is a completely different section. And what I love about this, like I mentioned, is that my clients, by simply clicking ignore under element conditions, can always see both sections in front of them. So if they had to make a change here, this is a change, they can make that change to just the annual plan, not to the monthly plan. They can go ahead and save, and now they can see those reflected here. This is a change and no longer there. So a nice little way to be able to toggle between two items on a page. And to be perfectly honest, it is super, super simple. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful. I would love to see your projects in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you have found this content useful. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.